Well, we've got Kinsey Schofield here, who's a Los Angeles-based royal family expert and entertainment reporter. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me, Toby. Now, what is it, as an American, that appeals to you most about the British royal family? You know what? I have to give credit to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle that really opened the door for me because Mm. I was a news news reporter. I was a morning show reporter. And I... like. I felt it was a wake up with Kinsey type thing, but the news was always so heavy and down. Mm. And so I just wanted to make sure that I, I just wanted to change my, 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 my path. I wanted to be positive. I wanted to be happy, (laughs) although I am giving Harry and Megan a little too much credit there. Um, (laughs) But um, I wanted to do positive news. I didn't want to do the negative stuff. Mm. And I have a history in entertainment and Harry and Megan really opened up that door with the entertainment and Royal. They really solidified that 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 path where you can be an entertainment Mm -hmm. reporter and it gives you credibility to talk about this couple. So um, I once Meghan Markle was introduced to, you know, into the picture, that's when I decided I really wanted to focus all of my energy on covering the British royal family. Yeah. And it's interesting to progress that way, I suppose, because once you get over Harry and Meghan, it's not really entertainment reporting anymore, is it? Yeah, you're right. But we do have some elements. I mean, Mm. there are some soapy soap opera elements when it comes to the British royal family. If you think about Prince Charles, Princess Diana and Camilla, that's there's like that soap entertainment element. I mean, everything Prince Andrew has done over the last few years, it, you know, is tabloidy, you know, entertainment Mm. gossip. Um, And then they're like real celebrities in the UK. They clamor towards the royal family. They Mm. all want, you know, Ed Sheeran, you're always seeing him with them. Um, There's another one. I'm forgetting her name, but, you know, I know that Charlotte loves Shakira. So there are little bit, little tidbits of entertainment associated with the royal family. Mm. Yeah, that's an interesting one, isn't it? And the Queen has been the Queen for 70 years now, but I've never heard any bad words said about her. It's incredible that there's no gossip there. Yeah, I know. You're absolutely right. I mean, they try to build gossip around mm. her when it comes to her children, which I think is so unfair because yeah. they're all adults. When they've done all <laughs> these things, they've all been adults, you know? Mm. Um, But yeah, she seems to be untouchable. Yeah. And 70 years on the throne is incredible, isn't it? I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed um, Mm. because she really has been so selfless in everything she's done. She has made her life a life of service. She's not secretly fought for headlines like we know some of the other royal members have. She never leaks stories. Mm. It wasn't about attention to her. It's truly always been about um, how she can make other people's lives lives better and I think that that's really so so inspiring Mm. and why do you think she's lasted so long because I think there's some other countries in the world where they don't do it forever they sort of abdicate and hand it over in the end so why do you think the Queen has sort of had this obligation to go on Um, I think that she knows her father would have done it and she really Mm. admired him I think she knows that her father would have been there for absolutely as long as he could Uh, I don't think he would have ever abdicated um, yeah. uh, you know, she is just somebody that grew up in a different time where um, discipline was so much more important and celebrated. And, you know, I, I, I you know, I hate to bring up Harry and Meghan again, mm-hmm. but they they left, they quit, you know, and she is yeah. she comes from a generation that just does not quit. You push mm. through. And so I think that's really admirable. And I think that that is why she continues to reign. Yeah. And I suppose maybe with Edward the Eighth, she sort of saw what happened there. Would that maybe influence her? Yes, she wanted to make sure that never happened again. You know, mm. she she wanted to say, "This is our family. We're going to stake this claim, and we are going to, um, you know, this we're going to make this our own." So that's mm. you know very really exciting. Yeah, and for most people alive today, she's always been the queen, which is yeah. Incredible. No, I was thinking about that. I was even for my dad because I think she, I think she, her coronation was the year that my dad was born wow. and I was like wow even for my dad she, she has been the queen all of his life that's so interesting to me yeah it's one of these things that I think when eventually she's not the queen anymore to put it lightly a lot of people are going to have so much grief that they weren't even expecting because she's sort of always been there you know in America 
and I don't, I, I mean this mm. in the sweetest way possible, but in America, she is like our grandma. Like mm. she <laughs> is like, we love her. She's perfect. We admire the way she dresses. We love her cute facial expressions. You know, I think mm. she's very much comparable to Betty White in, in the pop culture realm yeah. of, Amer- of Americans. Like we just love her. She's always been there. We will be devastated when she's gone because we feel like we know her because she's been around for so long and mm. we've, uh, we've adopted her as our own yeah and there's been a lot of talk lately about her mobility issues and that's sort of worrying people but is that worth worrying about because it's not serious illness yeah no you're right i think a lot of a lot of this has to do with how she struggled to watch her sister princess margaret Mm. in a wheelchair in public i think that that really um affected her and the family negatively they felt like it showed weakness perhaps Um, So I don't necessarily, I'm with you. I Mm. think a mobility issue is like the least of our problems. I'm glad that that's all it is. And um, I I don't think that it's the end of the world. I think that she just would prefer not to show weakness. She would prefer to show strength. So she's Mm. only going to put herself in situations where she knows she's going to excel. And Mm. that is a pretty good idea. Like that is, that's brilliant for that to be your your strategy. Mm. On the other hand, though, it would be a great, message i suppose for disability awareness if she came out in a wheelchair yeah i mean i i think that they they show that in other ways and some of the causes Mm. that they get behind but she is um in a position that neither one of us will ever be able to truly understand you know she think about going head to head with churchill i mean Mm. like she seriously has had to fight for so long for respect and and for um just to have a voice because she was a young woman when this started so her headspace is different than ours because she had to fight a a totally in a totally different world to to be respected and to be heard by some of the most powerful men in the world yeah absolutely now of course you run a blog and a podcast to die for daily what kind of things do you like to cover yes so i mean people ask me about that name they're like to die Mm. for daily yeah it's pretty edgy um but it's really i just i admired princess diana because i felt like she lived every day with her heart on display and so that's the daily part like you know be kind be kind, do what you can for other people. Um, but when it comes to what we cover, we, I do love, I honestly, what I love most is Royal books. I love mm. Andrew Morton, you know, Tina Brown. I love reading about the history of the Royal family. So I'd say the majority of my website is, is, you know, talking to some of those authors and yeah. reviewing some of those books and um, just keeping up with the family. What I, what I think is interesting in some of the pop culture aspects where they do mix with entertainment and where they do have a little bit like, you know, this, obviously I'm going to talk about a lot, Harry and Meghan's Netflix pursuits and the the new Mm. reality show. And, um, you know, the Queen's Jubilee, the entertainment that's going to be provided there. So it's really kind of this pop culture mix of royal family news. Yeah. And it's interesting that you like to read about royal history and a lot of people have been watching it. How realistic is the crown? I would say the crown is so entertaining and not necessarily very realistic because If you go back, I mean, specifically with the Charles and Diana story, I think they made my princess Diana look like a lunatic. And (laughs) I don't think she was necessarily, I would like to imagine that she spent um, a little more time outside of the bathroom than the crown Mm. depicts. It felt like she was hugging the toilet for 50 to 60% of the show. Um, But I do, you know, the queen is, seems so harsh and hard on the crown. And I don't Mm. necessarily think that that's the case. Um, I think that, I think that the princess Diana and Prince Charles love triangle with Camilla was much more in depth than what we saw. Um, So there are a lot of, you know, how do you not cover, how do you not feature princess Anne's attempted kidnapping? I mean, like Mm. that is like the, one of the biggest things that happened to the, to the British Royal family, how that, and you have Anne as a character, this is the perfect opportunity. So there are a couple of things missing. I think a couple of the characters are flawed and I just, but it's so, 
so fun to watch. I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't deny the fact that I love the show, but it is hard to debate people about the British Royal family when that is what they think is the (laughs) truth. And I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, that's not the way it happened. (laughs) Mm. Yeah. It's interesting about the queen being tough, I suppose, because in the series, she's quite tough on the prime ministers and stuff. And I wonder if that's actually the case because officially she has the power to discipline them, but whether she does or not, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's not just, it's not just the prime ministers, which I do. Mm. It's always fun to watch her go head to head with the prime ministers because that that I don't mind but yeah. there's this coldness about her when it comes to her children and her children hurting mm. that I don't think is true and I don't like I think she was uncomfortable when Charles and Diana came to her and said we're struggling and we're having problems I think it was an uncomfortable conversation to have but yeah. did she go oh, not again I highly doubt that you mm. know like I really highly doubt that so it's things like that like I don't mind her being tough in a room with um, a foreign and leader. I don't yeah. mind that at all. Uh, I don't mind it, her having strong political beliefs that she's having a hard time hiding. I think that's really interesting and human. But when it comes to the coldness she has towards her children, I'm really uncomfortable with that because I don't think that that's sincere. And I think it. I think it. it you're trying to put this person in a negative light so that people have a negative opinion of her. And I don't think mm. that's fair. I suppose part of the magic of the royal family is that enigma we don't really know what goes on inside so when you're writing a series about this you don't know what to put exactly yeah and they utilized a lot of those books that i love and read like uh, andrew morton is uh, participating he's consulting in this latest mm. season um because this is the season where diana secretly writes the book season five and um robert lacy has been a consultant on them too so they do get as close as they can to experts that can give them a sense of what's gone on But the word for word dialogue is obviously nowhere near what what truly transpired. Yeah. Now, have you ever met a member of the royal family in the past? I haven't. I'm going to the Jubilee and I do have tickets in the Queen's in the Queen's section. Allegedly, I don't know what it (laughs) technically means, but the tickets were so expensive. So I hope she's near. Um, But yeah, so I'm I mean, I don't know. If I, I don't know if I would, I think I would be too embarrassed or shy to meet them. Mm. I don't know if I would like even make an attempt to shake hands or to curtsy in front of anybody. I think that um, I am just way too shy for that when it comes to them. Have you ever seen a member from the distance? I don't know. I don't think so. You know, Mm. I was so jealous because my friend was at the Super Bowl and I was like, you were in the same room as Prince Harry. But (laughs) no, I haven't had that pleasure yet. No. Yeah. I've got a weird one. I saw Prince Harry through a pair of binoculars once. (gasps) Wow. He would hate that. (laughs) Tell me more. (laughs) This was about eight years ago at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow (gasps) and he was sort of sitting opposite. I don't know why I had binoculars. Probably just to see stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince Harry was the least of my expectations. I think William and Kate were there as well, but I didn't spot them. Oh, that's so funny. So I don't think he'd mind that. I just think he's Hmm. worried about binoculars on holiday. As long as he wasn't on holiday, you're fine. Yeah. (laughs) And of course, you're celebrating the Jubilee by coming to London, as you mentioned. Are you up to anything else there apart from going to the big party? Um, You know, I so what I understand is that it's like a big party. I'm going to Windsor and I think I'm going to do the big Windsor picnic. But um, from what I understand, it's just kind of like the biggest street party ever. So I haven't tried to make too many specific plans because I'm just prepared to go to pub to pub and (laughs) and rage. But I'm not I'm not necessarily sure if um like as far as tickets i've only got derby tickets i plan to do the windsor big picnic because i'm staying i decided to do two days in windsor because i love it there and um but yeah that's really all i have planned i might do some sightseeing i love kensington palace and i wanted to go to one of the museums there but i when i was talking to a friend um oh and i wanted to go to the parade and Mm. to see the hopefully the queen on the balcony but uh as far as um, other specific t- things I just I'm under the impression that you just like go like the streets the street is the party and you're just <laughs> walking around making new friends yeah that's pretty much it I think <laughs> and what is your favorite memory of the queen my favorite memory of the queen well I actually I actually think it's Fergie and Andrew's wedding mm. and I think that Prince William is running towards their carriage and I think she runs to grab him to stop him <laughs> and I think 
it's the only time I've ever seen her running. Wow. So I think that that's actually one of my favorite memories of the queen. Um, also, this is probably not her favorite memory, but one I was really touched when they came back after Princess Diana's death, mm -hmm. watching her engage with people and watch outside of the palace and like that sea of flowers. Yeah. I'm sure she does not consider that a positive memory. But to me, I really felt her feeling the pain of the people she was talking to. You just you just kind of watched her dissolve. And it yeah. was emotional for me to see her get emotional. So I that really touched me to see that when I and now it's when I was a young girl, obviously. Um, but those are some of my favorite memories of her. I mean, I, I obviously just love her facial expressions. I love mm. the way she dresses. Um, yeah. She makes the funniest facial expressions. And, you know, she knows people are looking at her and there's a camera on her and she'll just make these fun, cute little faces like, mm, you know, so um, I just I, I just uh, in, in her, I just think she is very he's, she's a precious woman. I love her. And of course, I'm going to celebrate 70 years. It's an incredible accomplishment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, where can we keep up to date with you on your blog and podcast and everywhere? Oh, well, I'm at to die for daily.com. That's T O D I for daily.com spelled normally. And yeah. um, I have a new book coming out called R is for Revenge Dress about Princess Ooh. Diana and the royal family. And that will be really fun. I hope it doesn't get me into any trouble. <laughs> and um, yeah, so to die for daily.com is where you can find everything and you can listen to the to die for daily podcast wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Great. Well, many thanks for joining us today. It's been great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. This was fun.